Hi, my name is Katie Pusho. I am the Pre-Nursing 2 instructor at the Literacy and Technology Center. I am a registered nurse. I received my Bachelor of Science in Nursing from Southeastern in 2007. I worked my entire nursing career at Women's Hospital, where I spent most of that time as a labor and delivery nurse and also several years in the operating room. I was a charge nurse for many years and I served on several leadership committees where I helped provide um, clinical education to hospital staff. Last year was my first year as an instructor with the Literacy and Technology Center. We had a great year. I really enjoyed my time with the students. Um, I feel like we all learned a lot and I'm really excited about this year. So I just wanted to share some information that will be helpful for students and parents to help y'all prepare for the upcoming school year and for this course. So let's get to it. The Pre-Nursing 2 program is a cooperative effort between Livingston Parish Public Schools, North Shore Technical Community College, and the Louisiana Department of Education. Students will be enrolled in college courses through the Literacy and Technology Center, and you will also receive high school credit. Our goal for the Pre-Nursing 2 program is to ensure that our students will be safe and effective clinicians. As an instructor, I have a duty to protect both the students and their future patients. The coursework is fast paced, but it's in a high school setting where I'm able to give the student more attention to help ensure their success because, of course, I want every student to be successful. Therefore, to ensure your success, all rules and regulations set forth by Livingston Parish Public Schools, the Louisiana Department of Education, and the Literacy and Technology Center and assigned clinical sites must be followed. We're going to have time at the beginning of school to go over many of those rules. Um, the rules are there to help you be successful, not to make you fail. So some of the rules include, but they're not limited to, attendance, course requirements, dress code, confidentiality, clinical internship hours, and discipline. And we'll go over all of that. Um, I do want to say before moving on into all the clinical requirements that for the Pre-Nursing 2 program, Typically, the prerequisites for this course are CNA um, or patient care tech. Some students might also already have had medical assisting. Um, those courses are a prerequisite because they lay down a great foundation, um, a great theory to build off of for the concepts that are learned in the pre-nursing program. Um, majority of students will have had at least one of those courses, if not multiple. If you are a student has, that has not had um, CNA or PCT, that's okay. You're here because you have good grades and Ms. Alden feels that you will be successful in this course. But I just do want to point out that the other students already have some foundation in healthcare. Um, so a little bit of independent learning might be necessary on your part. You might have to um, you know, do a little bit more reading or studying at home if you don't have the knowledge of some of the concepts that we're going to be covering in class because unfortunately I don't have the time to go back and go over every concept that was learned in CNA or PCT. So a little bit of ind independent learning might be necessary, um, but it's not impossible for you to be successful in this course. So we're going to look at some clinical requirements for my course. Um, this is a bit of a rigorous to-do list and it's not for us to be tedious. Um, it's required by our internship sites because it's not only safety for their patients, but it's safety for the students as well. So we have to have a valid CPR card. So BLS is the basic life support for healthcare providers. That is the course necessary um, for your CPR. A current immunization record, so an up-to-date immunization record provided from the doctor's office. They all have an expiration date printed on them, so just make sure that you're within the time frame. Routine lab test. So vaccines that you receive when you are a child do not always guarantee life immunity. So students will need to have blood drawn um, to see if they're still immune to varicella, which is chicken pox, MMR, and hepatitis B levels. A lot of times those hepatitis levels, you know, if you're near the age of 18 and you had them when you were infant, toddler, um, you're no longer immune. So you don't have to have 
the completed series to start internship, you just have to start it. It is a three shot series. So if you go to your doctor and they tell you that you are not immune, you get your first shot and you schedule your next appointment for your next shot several months later. That's all you need. You just have to have it started to be able to start your internship. <clears throat> TB skin test. Um, if you are a previous CNA student or PCT student and you had a TB skin test last year, um, if it was done after August 1st, you're good. But if it was done prior to that, it needs to be redone. Just as a healthcare worker, we have to have a TB skin test done annually. So that's that's like a health requirement. That's going to be from your facility, not necessarily from me saying your TB skin test is too old, but your facility is going to require an up-to-date test. Um, flu shots for this year, they will start to be available um, likely around September, October. So once um, doctor's offices, Walgreens, whoever you go to to typically get your flu shot, once those <clears throat> are available for this year, um, you will get that. We need a copy of your driver's license, proof that you have at least liability, car insurance, um, proof of health insurance, that's a requirement of Louisiana Department of Ed, and a criminal background check um, done through Louisiana State Police. It is the responsibility of the student and parent to provide these to me. So it is a lot. So I would encourage you to start now. Go ahead and make that doctor's appointment to um, have your blood drawn and check those titer levels. It's going to take time. And the more you get done, the sooner you get it done, the easier it's going to be for us to schedule those internships. Um, and you're not going to be stressed out having to miss school or run quickly after school to try and get everything completed. Clinical internships. So whenever the student attends internship, they will be performing invasive procedures in a medical office or a lab, um, like drawing blood, giving injections, checking blood glucose, things of that nature. Students should have their own transportation to and from their assigned clinical site. So for clinicals, <clears throat> let me just back up and talk to that talk to you a little bit about that. So once we start our internship, which hopefully will be um, around October this year, obviously is very different. So we don't know exactly what internship looks like at this point, but um, just going through what we know from the past, what I would typically do is start internship in October. Um, so if everything goes forward um, as planned, what that will look like for the students, <clears throat> excuse me, they will come to the Literacy and Technology Center on Mondays and Fridays. And then once internship has begun, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, they will go to their internship site during what would be their class time with me. So they're not missing anything at home school. It doesn't conflict with their schedule whatsoever. It's going to be during their class time. <clears throat> so students have to have transportation because most of these internship sites for the students to be able to get the hands-on experience that they need, internship sites will only take one student. So you cannot count on riding to internship with your friend because most likely you're going to be in that clinical setting on your own. You're not going to be there with other students. Students must call the Literacy and Technology Center office from their assigned clinical site phone on each day of their clinical internship. So that is your attendance check. You cannot call from your cell phone. That does not give us any proof that you are actually at your internship site. Um, so you will call. Y'all will meet Miss Deborah. She is our secretary in the office. You'll see her every day whenever you come in. You will call Miss Deborah. When you get to your site using their phone, and hey, Miss Deborah, I am a pre nursing two student. My name is blah blah blah. I'm at whatever clinical site, and she'll jot down the time, and that's your attendance for that day. As far as assigning students to an internship site, I do my best to assign you as close as possible to your home school. It is not always possible. Um, those clinical requirements that we just went over in the last slide, the sooner you get that done, you're going to get your site assigned to you. So 
you know, if all the, most of the, let's say I have a bunch of Albany students and they're turning in their um, clinical requirements and clinical paperwork, they're going to get their Albany, Springfield, Hammond locations first. Um, so I'm going to try and keep you close. Students that are Live Oak students, I'll try and keep you close to Watson, Denham. Baton Rouge is a possibility. I did have some students go to Baton Rouge last year. Um, and then we have multiple sites around Livingston Parish. So placement is dependent on getting your stuff to me, um, all of your requirements also. Each student must get 90 clinical hours as well as 30 successful blood draws or sticks. Therefore, a student may spend three hours at their clinical site and not get a successful stick, but they will get their three hour time credit. So these requirements are from our phlebotomy certification company. So these are their requirements, not my requirements. In order to, you can take the certification and pass the test, but if you don't have clinical hours and you don't have blood draws, you're not gonna get the phlebotomy certification. So this is really important. Um, that's why attendance is so important during internship time. And I'll kind of go into more details on attendance in just a little bit. Um, but the 30 successful blood draws, we will have a lot of opportunity in class to do this, do these blood draws. Um, <clears throat> students will draw blood on each other, um, other students. They will, we'll have a family stick day. So parents, you will be able to come to school and let your student draw your blood. Um, so they will have opportunities in class, but doing it at internship is also um, important for their certification. Looking at the clinical dress code, appropriate dress standards have been established in order to present and maintain a professional appearance to patients, medical staff, and employees. These standards allow for comfortable performance of duties and promotion of safety and infection control. The appearance of a pre-nursing student is an important part of public relations and your student reputation. Any student not conforming to the dress code policy for clinical internship will be counseled and may face disciplinary action. So you will have a set of scrubs that you're expected to wear, you're expected to wear the proper tennis shoes and just maintain a neat personal appearance. Um, you know, well-groomed, like brushed hair, you don't, you know, have sleep in your eyes and toothpaste on your face, basically. Just look presentable. Students must wear a professionally fitting scrub uniform. This means scrubs must be loose fitting without visible undergarments. Scrubs will be ordered around August, um, August, early September. And the school board pays for one pair of scrubs that you're going to be wearing at internship. Um, I do suggest having at least two pairs of scrubs because once internship does start and students are going Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's a lot to get the, that one pair of scrubs washed every day. Um, so ordering a second pair is typically a good idea just to kind of help you stay on top of things. An ID badge must be worn at all times on the upper portion of the scrub top or jacket. Clean, non-skid, closed toe shoes must be worn at clinical sites. So just regular tennis shoes. Um, the lake or certain lake facilities do require waterproof shoes like a nursing clog or um, like Crocs. We didn't run into any problems with it last year. If it's a requirement, they'll let us know and we'll deal with it. But typically, tennis shoes are preferred at all the sites. No Toms, Vans, Sperry's, or Converse. Nothing that's like a canvas shoe that's going to absorb body fluids um, and nothing that's like a slip-on because that's dangerous to you. Clean, natural, unpainted nails for clinical days. So um, as a health care provider, you cannot have artificial nails. Um, that's a breeding ground for bacteria, and we definitely don't want to spread any germs or bacteria to our patients. And you don't want to keep that on your own self either. Um, so you do go to internship during homecoming, prom times, things like that. So just make sure that if you get fake nails, um, gel, acrylics, whatever, 
have it removed before you return to your internship site. No jewelry is to be worn with the exception of a watch with a second hand. You need that for whenever you're doing vital signs. Um, so just don't wear rings, things like that, that's going to interfere with your hand washing. I'm okay with a small pair of stud earrings, nothing crazy, nothing dangly that's going to um, get caught or come, have the potential to come out. But if your site allows a small pair of studs, okay. uh, be prepared to cover any visible tattoos. Hair and makeup should have a clean and neat appearance. And for males, facial hair should be clean, neat, and well-groomed. Confidentiality. So we cover a whole unit on this in class. And if you've ever been to the doctor, you have heard about HIPAA. It is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. This is the patient's right to privacy. So students are required to maintain confidentiality of patient information in accordance with state and federal laws. No students will have access to or have the right to review any medical record except where necessary in the regular course of the clinical program. So when you are in a doctor's office, there are many patients that come through during the day. You might only be involved in, the pair, in say, three of those patients' care. That's the only three that you have the right to view. Um, the discussion, transmission, or narration in any form, including texting, video, pictures, social media, by students of any patient information obtained in the regular course of the program is forbidden except as permitted by law. Don't share anything. Supplies for success. So, this is um, student preference, but I do recommend having like a separate bag, a little tote or a separate little backpack just for this class to keep all your supplies and your notes together. Um, that way you're not, you know, if you remove your binder for your homeschool, uh, like while you're at homeschool, you remove your binder for my class and you forget it, you don't have it. Um, you just don't want to run into those issues. So that's why it kind of helps uh, students Last year, they kept things separate and it helped them always have what they needed. The clinical scrubs, those cost around $35. So like I said, we do provide you with one pair, um, but if you do choose to buy an additional pair, a top and a bottom is gonna be around $35. If you buy a scrub jacket, that can be around $20 or so. Um, tennis shoes, you don't have a specific name brand that you have to purchase, but just you know whatever you have that is school appropriate can be used at clinicals. Stethoscope, don't go run out and buy a stethoscope. They're typically, you know, they start at 15 to 20 bucks at a drugstore. You can get them on Amazon. They can get really expensive depending on um, what you're looking at. It's not always necessary. Whenever we're doing vital signs in class, I have tons of stethoscopes that the students will use. Um, but as far as at internship site, if the student wants their own, a lot of them ask for them for Christmas. Like Littman is a really good brand. Students will ask for a nice Littman stethoscope for Christmas from their parents or grandparents. Um, some clinical sites have stethoscopes there that nurses, MAs, CNAs can just grab and use as needed and then clean when they're done. Um, so that's why I say don't run out and buy one. Wait and see what's required of your internship site. Watch with a second hand. That's for doing vital signs. And then an internship binder. So just a little half inch binder, a little three ring binder that has some dividers and some pockets to hold all of your internship paperwork. Um, I do also suggest having a small little pocket sized notebook. Depending on your site, you might be going from patient to patient, recording vital signs, and then go and sit down at the computer to type all those vital signs in the patient's electronic medical records. So having a little notebook where you can keep those vitals and things um, separated for each patient. You can just stick it in that pocket um, while you're doing your patient care is helpful. Um, for the classroom, index cards, um, that's always helpful for like whenever we're getting into medical terminology and when we're doing phlebotomy, the students like to have those index cards to make um, little study cards with. A notebook or a binder with paper for note taking. Um, don't go buy colored pencils or markers. I have some in class. You probably already have some. We do some activities and a couple little small projects where those are used, but between what I have and what you already have, don't buy more of that. 
Um, and then just pens, pencils, highlighters for note taking and things like that. You will need a black ink pen um, for like medical terminology test. That's what you use whenever you're charting in healthcare. So it's my goal in class to get you used to writing with a black ink pen. So that's definitely a requirement. Program fees. So the class fee for my class is $10. That just helps me be able to purchase um, lab and venipuncture supplies because we use a lot, lot, lot of that. Um, and then disposing of the sharps after we do all these blood draws, the company has to come pick it up. So we have to pay for all that. Um, additional fees are paid to other entities. So your background check um, does cost. If you go to the doctor, you have to pay your copay for um, getting your TB skin test, doing your blood titers. Um, if you have to renew or get a CPR certification, you'll have to pay for that. Um, the school fee, the instructional and technology fee is $20. Um, then you have your gas cost from going to and from internship and then the certification exam. So the students will have the opportunity to take the phlebotomy certification, which is $75 and the um, medical assistant certification if they don't already have that which is $155. So the school board does pay for those certifications. However, if the student does not pass and they wish to retake the certification, that cost is on you. So this just kind of gives you like a little idea of what things would cost if you were going to get these certifications on your own. So I have all my patient care tech info in here from last year and I left it because it's kind of comparable for medical assistant, um, phlebotomy technician, any of those certifications. So if you go to like a Votech um, or like a little trade school where you can get these certifications, you're looking at anywhere from a couple thousand dollars up to 20 plus thousand dollars to get your certification, which gives you a great foundation to then further go on and to if you're going to pursue like a um, nursing degree or physician's assistant. Um, having this is really going to help you, but if you were doing it on your own after high school, you could be paying thousands. So getting this opportunity to do it in high school for free, basically, other than the small program fees that you pay, it's just, it's tremendous that y'all have this opportunity. And I just wanted to be, wanted you to be aware that, I mean, it's such a great opportunity for y'all. Incidentals, so excessive absences, um, and I didn't touch on this whenever I was going over internship, um, but if you have absences, that does not guarantee that you will get to go to internships. So excessive absences, like, okay, so for the program, you come to me on Monday and Friday, you go to intern internship Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If you miss school on Friday, you went to internship all week, but you don't come to my class on Friday. On Monday, you come to class. On Tuesday, when you should be going to internship, you're not going to internship. You have to make up those hours to me. So you will come to school and make up those hours. Um, so you don't get to just always go to internship, but skip class where you're getting the theory and the fundamentals of healthcare. Um, you still have to come to class. We still have um, lots of learning to do. So absences are a big deal for this program. It is really, really important that you attend every day, not only internship, but my class as well. If you're going to have excessive absences due to an illness or a death in the family, just notify me so that we can make arrangements. Um, pregnancy, if you are pregnant or become pregnant during the course of the school year, notify me. You'll have to have a doctor's order to participate in the program. That includes clinical internship. If you have any health in issues, diabetes, seizures, asthma, sickle cell, hemophilia, any life-threatening allergies or emergency medical disorders, let me know. I need to be aware of these things so that we can always make sure that we are keeping you safe. We cannot help you be successful if we don't know what's going on with you. Student and parent agreement, obviously I can't have y'all do that right now, but we will do that shortly. 
um, after school starts, the first few days of school, I will send this home. Basically, it just makes you aware that we do invasive procedures in this class. Students are drawing blood on each other in class while they're supervised. Still, it's necessary for them to get that hands-on experience. Um, and it also kind of covers the fact that obviously we are in the middle of a pandemic and my class, a big part of my class is internship. So students will be going and working in these offices and facilities where it is a potential that they come into contact with patients that either have COVID or have been exposed to it. So this agreement just covers, um, it covers you being aware that um, invasive procedures happen and exposure to infectious disease is a possibility. That's nothing new with healthcare. This pandemic doesn't change anything and it's something that we learn in class also. Um, we go over standard precautions because as a healthcare worker, we're exposed to infectious disease all the time and you might not even know who has infectious disease. So that's why we really have a big focus in class on learning standard precautions and how to protect yourself. Um, so I will send that home just so students and parents are aware that not only will you be drawing blood on a student, but they will also be drawing your blood. You can't say, okay, I'm going to draw your blood, but you can't draw mine. Part of the program and the learning process is doing both. So it is a requirement for this course and this form that you'll be seeing is just acknowledgement that you're aware of that. I'm looking forward to working with y'all. I'm looking forward to meeting y'all. Um, I really think this year is going to be a great year. Obviously things look a, a lot different, but I just, I want you to still be encouraged and excited for the upcom upcoming year because I really think it's going to be a great year. I think that you will learn a lot. The, the hands-on, the great thing about this course is internship. Getting that hands-on life knowledge, being out there, actually working with patients, that is the most valuable thing that you can get. It will just give you such a jump start into your future um, interest in whatever you're wanting to pursue in college. If you're going to continue on to nursing school, you're going to have such a great foundation going in. So I'm just really excited for this year and I'm really, really looking forward to meeting y'all and I hope you enjoy the rest of your summer.